Hey everybody, welcome to Amplify uh, Thermal Energy Lesson 4.3, Writing a Scientific Argument. First, let's jump to the warm-up. Now, you've seen warm-ups like this before, um, where we are evaluating uh, two arguments that uh, some people have made. Uh, so, making a convincing argument. Kalani and Lyle, 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 Lyle. Someone can tell me how to pronounce that. Um, our students who have been comparing the total kinetic energy, thermal energy, of an iceberg to an ice cube, read and compare their arguments, then answer the questions below. Um, so read through these arguments and decide whose argument is more convincing. Now, don't just say, oh, it's Lael's argument because uh, it's longer than Kalani's argument. No, wait, come on, no, no. You better have better, uh, you better have, yeah, better reasoning than that. Um, for why one person's argument is better than the other. So go ahead and write that down here, um, and then, uh, yeah, come on back to me. Now we are using the reasoning tool. We are in tab number two. So um, we've used the reasoning tool before many times. However, um, sometimes parts of it are filled in for us. Sometimes parts of it are not filled in for us. It's, it's kind of, it's, it feels like it's kind of different every single time. Um, Let's look at this really quick, though. Why, why is reasoning important? And we've talked about this before. Uh, after scientists state a claim, they connect, the, uh, they connect evidence to the claim in the reasoning process. So <clears throat> a lot of people are good at having a claim, right? I think this. A lot of people are good at finding evidence for their claim. But sometimes it's hard to make that connection from the evidence to the claim. How does the evidence actually back up the claim? A lot of people leave that out. Um, and uh, yeah, so having the reasoning though makes the argument more convincing. That's why we're practicing. That's why we're practicing with this. So we have the reasoning tool. I love the reasoning tool because it actually is helpful um, for putting our thoughts together and actually helping us come up with more convincing arguments. Uh, it's probably good to start on the right-hand side actually. Um, I know it's kind of backwards from our Western uh, methods of reading, whatever, but the therefore, put your claim in right here. And as you can see, the therefore column, it covers all three. It's just one claim, right? Your claim, do you think that the POW kits failed because of user error, or do you think the POW kits failed because, well, there's something wrong with them? Um, wait, Mr. Wigan, I don't think either one. I think both. Oh, well, shoot. Okay, well, write that down. Um, that's fine, whatever your claim is. Uh, but here's the thing, we need to have evidence we have five evidence cards, and we have the instructions for the POW kits. So uh, you'll have to choose which of those. We have spots for three, so definitely use three. Um, if you want to use more, that's fine, but at least use three. We have spots for three pieces of evidence. We have evidence cards A, B, C, D, E. <clears throat> we have the instructions. Um, and then, okay, I chose this piece of evidence. This piece of evidence supports this claim. Oh, great. Why? Why? That's this middle column, right? This matters because, um, and that's what you need to fill out here. So I have attached a uh, reasoning tool that you can fill in um, to your lesson uh, in Google Classroom. You can print it, you can write on it. Uh, it. It's a Google drawing, so you can put text boxes in there, what have you. But fill that out, okay, and then uh, come on back to me. Next, they want us to evaluate our reasoning tool. Now, the whole point here is they really want you to uh, distill your argument. They want you to only have the pieces of evidence and reasoning that you feel really support your argument. Because maybe as you were trying to get three pieces of evidence, you thought, well, this one kind of supports it, I guess. Um, but I don't feel like it's as strong as like this one right here. Well, that's fine. Pick which ones uh, you think really strongly support your argument um, and go with those. Just run with those. That's the ones, those are the ones that we are going to uh, put into our final argument. Um, and it also asks you to connect any pieces of evidence that you think work together. So you might think, hey, you know what? Evidence card A plus evidence card D, they kind of prove a point um, where, as you know, each one in isolation, uh, they don't really you know, convince me one way or another. But when you have them both together, 
oh, now, now the whole picture is coming together. So that's what they want you to do. Make sure you connect the pieces of evidence that um, actually support one another in uh, supporting your claim. Next, writing a scientific argument. Here we go. Time to write that argument. Um, and you know we're being helped along the way. We've already chosen our evidence. We already have our claim. <clears throat> We've already figured out our reasoning. All we need, all we really need to do, is put this into paragraph form. All the hard work is pretty much done for us, and we're still getting help here. Look, sentence starters. That's great. This is a really great way. Like I've always said, if you're having trouble figuring out oh, how do I say this, how do I even start this argument, how do I introduce this next idea that I have. Use some of these sentence starters. They're they're helpful. I'm not going to say you're plagiarizing. If yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you copy that. You know, my first piece of evidence is that that's fine. That's great. Um, use that um, for your da, 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 final argument down here. Uh, so we have some instructions. First, explain how water gets warmed with the PAL kit. Oh, okay. So they actually want you to review the instructions, which you should have. Um, if you don't have them, go back to lesson 4.1. I attached them to uh, the lesson in Google Classroom. Why following instructions is important. <laughs> Why is following instructions? Of Mr. Wigan, I don't even read the instructions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of you. Uh, anyway, why following the instructions is important hey, specifically for the POW kit, okay? Um, what might happen if you don't follow the instructions and how failure, there you go, to follow the instructions could lead to problems. I'll just give you a hint. Failure to follow the instructions might lead to the problem of not killing all of the microorganisms that might be harmful to your microbiome. I don't know. No, no. Next, write a scientific argument that addresses the question, why wasn't the water pasteurized? That's what we were started with, right? Um, we were asked to find out, hey, why didn't they work? Why are these kits not working? Um, <clears throat> and maybe they are working, but people are just using them wrong. State your claim. It says, first, state your claim. Start off with that. Start off with your claim and then go from there. Then use evidence to support your claim for each piece of evidence you use. Explain how. It supports your claim. And you know what? Write me a nice little summary statement at the end there, a nice little conclusion. Um, but yeah, again, this stuff, the, the evidence, you've already chosen your evidence. Uh, explain how it supports your claim. You've already done that in the reasoning tool. You just need to plug it into and make it a, make it a complete sentence. I know sometimes that's hard, but that's all you got to do. Hey, next, let's look at the homework. Uh, revising an argument. You know, so often I tell students, don't worry about this. But here's the thing. What is, what, is, what is this piece of homework actually asking you to do? Go back. Make sure you did a good job. Make sure you did everything you were supposed to do when writing the argument. And if you follow the instructions, you really should have done that already. But there are some good questions and some good suggestions here. Um, like this one right here. I really like this. Consider reading your argument aloud or having another person read it. Sometimes when someone else reads it to you or you hear it, actually, somebody saying it, you realize, oh my gosh, wait, whoa, whoa, no, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it made sense in my head when I put it on the paper, but I realize now I, I need to rewrite that because that I, I, it, does, it doesn't, yeah. Um, <clears throat> use questions below to help you uh, review your argument. Does your argument clearly explain why the POW kit might or might not be able to pasteurize water? Right? You should have explained the instructions for the POW kit and what happens if you don't uh, follow the instructions. Do you describe your supporting evidence? Did, did you do that? I mean, this is all stuff that we just talked about and we just said, hey, make sure you add this into your argument. Do you thoroughly explain? Do you use your reasoning uh, to show how the evidence supports your claim? And then, you know, if you need to, rewrite it. Rewrite, just, you don't have to rewrite the whole thing. You don't have to write a whole new argument. Just clean it up, make it sound better. Uh, it's always good to go back and, uh, and reassess. So the instructions are all here again. Um, do that. And then lastly, this self-assessment. Yes, please do this. Um, we have all of these questions here um, that we have seen before, right? Uh, so this one, 
I understand, we, all, we just have this one, that scientists need to stay open to new ideas so they can change their minds when presented with new convincing evidence. Do, do scientists need to stay open to new ideas so they can change their minds when presented with new convincing evidence? Hey, I'm just going to say, um, that's, that's, that's what science is all about, right? Um, so anyways, <clears throat> but I want to hear your thoughts on that. I do. Uh, maybe give me an example. So explain your choice. Um, and then what are the most important things you've learned in this unit about why things change temperature? That's nice and open-ended, isn't it? And then what questions do you still have? Here we go. Don't put none. Don't put, I don't have any questions. Don't put N-A. And don't leave it blank. Don't put I-D-K. No, put something there. Uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, write a question somebody else might have. Write something that you tr you really understand, um, but do not leave number three blank. Don't write no questions. Put something intelligent in there for me. Hey, after that, nice job, people. Uh, we are on to our end of unit assessment. Make sure you study your study guide for that. Um, you're gonna do great. You're gonna do awesome. And uh, yeah. See you next time.